My friends, welcome to the Word Exposed. Join me in contemplating the Lord present in the Holy Scriptures today, the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. The liturgical year culminates in this great feast, celebrating the kingship of our Lord who conquered sin and death with love. Today's gospel is taken from the conversation of Pilate and Jesus. Pilate asks Jesus if he is the king of the Jews, to which Jesus replies, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? These words of Jesus invite us to check our perception of Jesus. Who is he? Do we really recognize him as our king? Have we experienced his kingship? This is a good point to ponder especially these days when our faith in Jesus is being challenged by many forces. According to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will not invent new truth. The Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth that Jesus has already taught. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak and explore different languages to address people of different needs. Barriers and boundaries of discrimination, division, and injustice should disappear. The diversity of the gifts should not be a hindrance to the strengthening of the church. God chooses all. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading on this solemnity of Christ, the universal King, is taken from the book of Daniel. Let us reflect on the words that Jesus himself said to Pilate. His kingdom does not belong to this world. The kingdom of Jesus, his kingship, do not belong to this world. And this is the same vision that we have in the first reading from Daniel. Let us remember that this book of Daniel is quite complicated. And depending on the part of the book that we are reading, you could go to a different context. But the passage that we have for this solemnity presents to us a figure called the Son of Man. Some experts say that most probably this figure was about a whole community, which later on, later on, became concentrated on an individual. And the vision is that of a son of man, figure of the son of man, coming from above, telling us that this glorious figure does not come from the earth, from worldly matters. And what he brings is not concerns of this world, but from God. And this figure is presented to another figure called the Ancient One. Again, a figure, an image of God. The figure of the Son of Man is presented to God and before God. He was given dominion, glory, authority over all peoples and over all lands. Very clearly, the authority of this mysterious figure 
does not come from any human community, any human group, any human forces, but only from God. Now, if we look at the context of Daniel, we see that this glorious figure who gets from God all authority arose when different beasts were being confronted by the believers. Beasts, symbols of forces, of powers that were not only against God, but were destroying society and human life. And so the promise of this mysterious Son of Man is not just something that will make life enjoyable. There is a promise. Evil will be conquered, but it will be conquered by a figure who comes from God and whose kingdom is not of this world. It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he's coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading of the Solemnity of Christ the Universal King is taken from the book of Revelation. We have been reflecting on the very words of Jesus, My kingdom does not belong to this world. And that is the vision that Daniel received, the figure of a son of man who will be presented to the ancient one, God, and from God, this Son of Man will receive dominion, glory, and kingship over all nations and peoples of different languages. And this figure who gets his authority from God and not from this world will fight the beasts, destroying life and God's people. When we come to the second reading, the book of Revelation almost sets a parallel between the vision of Daniel and Jesus Christ. Jesus is presented as the glorious king coming down from above. Oh, the clouds of heaven bringing this glorious king to us. And this king, Jesus, has freed us from evil, especially sin, according to the second reading. The evil that destroys us. So this is a type of kingship from above that destroys not just any enemy, 
but the enemy called evil, sinfulness. That could be defeated only by a king who comes from God. For kings of this world might even propagate evil and sin. But the king from above, from God, will defeat evil. However, in the second reading, we see that this glorious king, affirmed by God, the Alpha and the Omega, this king defeated sin with his blood. And as he descends from above on glorious clouds, the people will look up to him and see the one who was pierced. And St. John tells us that Jesus the King was a testimony, a witness, and the firstborn from the dead. This glorious King whose kingdom comes from God whose kingdom does not come from the forces of this earth, exercises his kingship by dying, by being pierced with the lands, by going to the place of the dead. This is totally different from the kingdoms of this world. Sacrifice, martyrdom, embracing death, what type of kingdom is this? But this is the kingdom that comes from above, the kingdom that will conquer evil and sin. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel for this Sunday, the Solemnity of Christ, the Universal King, is taken from St. John. And the words of Jesus in the Gospel for today are the theme of our reflection. My kingdom does not belong to this world. This is already prefigured in the vision of Daniel in the first reading. The Son of Man coming from above, not from below, not from the earth, but from God. And receiving from God all power, dominion, and glory over all the nations. To fight the beasts, the evil that comes from this earth in order to destroy people, society. Only the one from above can fight the beasts. And in the second reading from the book of Revelation, we find Jesus almost exactly depicted in the way the vision of Daniel in the first reading presents the Son of Man. Jesus coming from the clouds, glorious, having defeated sin and evil, but 
he had to be pierced. He had to die and be the firstborn of those risen from the dead. We have this king from God whose kingship had to pass through the cross, sacrifice, and death. The kingdoms of this world resist that. They would not want the weakness of defeat and death. But the king, our king from above, conquered evil and sin by his cross. This is affirmed in the gospel. The context or the setting was Jesus' trial before his crucifixion. Pilate the symbol of the powers of this world, and Jesus. Pilate interrogating Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? That opened an opportunity for Jesus to explain his brand of kingship. My kingdom does not belong to this world. And look at how he described the kingdoms of this world. He says, if my kingdom were of this world, then ha, I would have military force to come to save me from you, from the Jews, from those who are accusing me. But as it is, my kingdom does not operate on military might. My kingdom is not about saving me. My kingdom is not using whatever power I have in order to shield myself. Pilate must have scratched his head and said, Okay, okay, <laughs> I'm happy that I'm not that type of king. I have soldiers whom I can command and they will die for me. But the kingdom of Jesus is the reverse. We don't have a king who will sacrifice us for his safety. But he will die saving us. My dear brothers and sisters, we have heard this a million times. But it merits repetition, especially on this special day. Our king conquers evil by the power of love. He says he came to the world to testify to the truth. But what is truth in the gospel? The truth is the full revelation of who God is. The truth is the revelation of the kingdom of love, divine love. And it is only where love reigns, where evil and the beasts of evil could be conquered. Without love, willing to die for the others. Without love, willing to be wounded for the others. Without love, willing to go to the place of the dead, evil will prosper. Evil will rule. The kingdom of Jesus is not of this world because it is a kingdom that operates according to the logic, the strategy of divine love. It may not be easy to grasp especially using the norms, the criteria of this world. And we are used to using the norms and criteria of this world. But today, even with our, with our lack of understanding, let us turn to Jesus, behold Him, and like Pilate, ask Him, explain to me what type of king are you? And let us have the courage to tell Jesus, I want to belong 
to your kingdom. I want to be one of your collaborators in spreading a kingdom of love to the point of sacrifice so that evil and the kingdom of evil would finally be conquered. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the last Sunday of this liturgical year. May I ask you to please review the whole year and thank the Lord for your little acts of love, little acts of love, when you smiled at a stranger, when you offered your seat to an elderly person, when you assisted someone to cross the street, when in spite of your busy schedule, you abandon your self-preoccupation in order to be with someone. The times when you could have earned extra money, but rather visited a sick and lonely person. In those moments, beyond the spotlight, in the hiddenness of your heart, you know Jesus rules and that his kingdom does not belong to this world. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. Friends, today we will look at some important aspects of the great feast of Christ the King. Biblical references to the title, the institution of the feast, and the prominent images used in its artistic depictions. In Greek, Christ means the anointed, and early civilizations believed that kings were the anointed ones of God. Even in the Old Testament, it is a man of God who pours oil on the head of a new king. Remember David, who was almost forgotten by his family, but God chose him and anointed him through the prophet Samuel. Reading the Gospels, one notes that different personalities had in one way or another referred to Jesus as king. The Magi sought the newborn king of the Jews, whom they found in a lowly manger. Pilate interrogated Jesus on his alleged kingship, and he inscribed King of the Jews on the sign fastened to his cross. These show the different moods during that time. Some welcomed the coming of the Anointed One, while others were alarmed because of the threat to their positions. We now go to the second point. Who instituted the feast? Pope Pius XI instituted the feast of Christ the King in 1925. It was originally celebrated on the Sunday before All Saints Day. But in 1970, it was moved to the last Sunday of the ordinary time, a fitting conclusion to the liturgical year. You might ask, why did Pope Pius XI 
think it was necessary to have such a feast. Having witnessed the horror of World War I, Pope Pius hoped to remind Christians that our allegiance must be to Christ, the King who served others with love and obtained dominion from the Father by offering himself for peace and reconciliation instead of violence. What we have said so far may be seen in the artistic depictions of Christ the King. Many of us have this image installed in our altars at home, a reminder that it is Jesus who reigns in our household. His robes are red, which is a color for martyrs, in contrast with purple for royals. Red represents the blood he sacrificed for our redemption. So he is not king because of pomp, but because of his sacrifice, which gives us life. And he continues to bless us through his sacrifice, as we see in the gesture of his right hand, that also bears a mark of his crucifixion. Traditionally, it is with the right hand that we impart blessing. There is also the Christogram, I-C-X-C, which means Jesus Christ conquers. But how did he conquer? Through service. That is why he is often depicted barefoot, a sign of humility and the readiness to serve. There you go, brothers and sisters. Hopefully, these bits of information would help you to have a meaningful celebration of today's feast. Happy Feast Day of Christ the King! Here are some points for your reflection. The first point is, how can we make Jesus known as the true King, especially to the youth? Paano natin may papakilala si Jesus bilang tunay na hari, lalo na sa mga kabataan? The second point is, how can we prevent making God's kingdom like the kingdoms of this world? Paano natin mahahadlangan na gawin ang pagahari ng Diyos na katulad ng mga pagahari ng mundong ito? O God, You created everything through Your Word. As we contemplate you in the scriptures proclaimed and heard today, renew us as your children and as brothers and sisters to one another. Amen. My friends, thank you for joining me this morning. May the Lord present in the scriptures make your heart burn for love of Him and move you to love others. Until next Sunday, only here on The Word Exposed. Jesus.